Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today we're going to be doing a Plant Princess deck profile. So this is a very interesting deck that I've actually been working on a lot recently. It's really fun to play. You can summon one of the cool nostalgic monsters that came out during the 5Ds era in the form of Titania, Princess of Camellias, which is a really awesome card that came out a long time ago in Crossroads of Chaos, but it's a really, really cool card still to this day for its being able to, during either player's turn, when a card effect that targets a card on your field is activated, you can tribute a face-up plant and negate the activation to do destroy it which is a really cool effect on a 2800 plant monster so without further ado guys don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad and definitely check out the patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards like getting your name in the description every single video getting assigned cards in the mail and even getting to your quest deck profile every single month you're a patron along with test hand so without further ado let's get straight on in this and fun fact guys this is actually uh, my mom's favorite deck and uh she actually requested for me to update it too because it's been like a year because she's like hey how's the channel going i'm like pretty good and she's like well when was the last time you updated Plant Princesses? And I was like, it's, it's been a while. And she's like, do an update of that one. I'll watch it. So, hi, Mom. So let's go ahead and do this. So first off, we're going to get into playing two copies of Titania. Titania is really, really good. Uh, the Princess of Camellias. This card is really, really good because during either player's turn, when a card effect is that targets a card on the field is activated, you contribute one face-up plant monster and negate the activation you do destroy that card, which is a really awesome effect just to be able to basically give a negation of targeting is a really nice effect. We then play a single copy of Princess of Cherry Blossoms. I bumped her down from one to two from the previous build. Um, basically what she does is she lets all the, um, she gains a hundred attack for each plant monster you control and other plant type monsters on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects, which is a pretty good effect just to be able to make them so they can't be destroyed by card effects. It's a great blanket effect for this card to be able to give all of them that ability. We then play a single copy of Princess of Sunflowers. Princess of Sunflowers is okay. If exactly one other plant monster you control and no other cards is destroyed by battle or by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your opponent's monsters and destroy that target and this card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect which is a pretty good effect being a 2800 beat stick is still also really nice but i see a copy of princess of autumn leaves autumn leaves is pretty good too what it, card, what it does basically is your opponent cannot target face up plant monsters for attacks except this card and if this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card effect um, either by battle or by card effect, you can start summon a plant monster from your deck, which is a really good effect just to be able to basically replace itself. I really like that ability to be able to float into another plant monster and doesn't care about the level. So you can all go all the way up into camellias, which is really, really nice. We then play three copies of Lone Fire Blossom because none of these cards actually special summon themselves out by any means. So the Lone Fire Blossoms are very necess or necessary in this deck because the Lone Fires are going to help you get your monsters out to your field as quickly as possible. It is very important that you actually play the Lone Fires in this deck. We then play three copies of Spell Striker. The Spell Striker is really nice because they're Earth monsters and they're easy to special summon this deck because you can summon uh, Melee of the Trees. This card is really, really good in this deck. And so you want to be able to use the Spell Striker to be able to go into that card. And plus, you can attack your opponent directly. It does only do 600 attack, but you just have to manage the spell card from the graveyard to summon it anyways. We then play three copies of Card Trooper. Card Trooper is kind of a weird one for a lot of you guys, but it's a really good card for one of the tech cards that I'm playing in later in the deck. This this card is fantastic in this build because basically it mills the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard, which is a really, really awesome effect. If it is destroyed by battle, you do get to draw a card as well. If you guys are unfamiliar with the Troop Dupe Scoop, uh, the old school um, deck, it's really, really good to be able to play this card in the deck because you can combo it with your spell striker to immediately overlay for two earth level threes to go directly into your melody of the trees. We then play two copies of Crane Crane. Crane Crane is decent as an extender because you want to normal summon this card in the deck to be able to target a level three monster in your graveyard and special summon it, which can be your Spell Striker or your Card Trooper to immediately give you that added bonus of monsters on your side of the field to be able to kind of go into additional plays. This card is really good to be able to play. We then play three copies of Deb Debris Dragon. This card used to be ridiculous in this deck because you would go into all sorts of different like single card plays like you go for this and then you go for black rose or you go for this and then you go for ancient fairy dragon or something like that but now it's used a little bit more for link plays opposed to uh synchro plays because i'm actually only playing one synchro in the entire extra deck which is a single copy of black rose which is oh, totally up to you you can change that out a little bit but this card special summons a monster from your graveyard that has um less or that is less than 500 attack which is your copies of card trooper and your crane cranes which is really easy 
easy to summon to your field, and it can also special summon from your graveyard your copies of Lone Fire to be able to synchro summon with those, but the monster that's used as a synchro material with this card has to be, or cannot be a level 4, which is totally fine by us, because all of these are level 3s. And then for my last monster, I'm playing a sealed copy of Rose Lover. Rose Lover is pretty good. Using your manager from the graveyard to special summon one plant type monster from your hand. And if you do, it's unaffected by trap effects, which helps you get these monsters out to your side of the field fairly quickly. And it's able to be able to use with stuff like Monster Reborn, Miracle Fertilizer, and Back to the Front to be able to get those monsters out quickly. Uh, we then play for the spells, because that's totally it for the monsters. Let's get into the spells. So the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Monster Reborn, which is just really good in this deck because you want to be able to revive your monster as quickly as possible to your side of the field um, because you play a really cool tech card that we're going to be getting to in a minute. A single copy of Foolish Burial because it's going to send the exact card that you need to the graveyard when you need it. Three copies of Trade In because you do play quite a few uh, level 8 monsters in the form of your plant princesses. They're pretty easy to get out of the graveyard if you do send them to the graveyard. So Trade In is actually a fantastic card for this deck. You play three copies of Rose Bell of Revelation. Rose Bell of Revelation is really, really, really good in this deck because it lets you add one plant monster with 2500 or more attack from your deck to your hand. Now you might be looking at this card and going, wait, some of your plant princesses aren't 2400 more attack. Well, that is true. The only one that you actually can't add is Autumn Leaves. That is a little bit unfortunate, but you can't add Autumn Leaves off this effect, but you can add the other three targets and technically four since you play Double Camellia. This card is really good in the deck because you can banish it from the graveyard as well. The special on a plant monster with 2400 or more attack from your hand to your side of the field, but you only use each effect of this card. You only use one effect of this card per turn, which is still pretty good to be able to get you that monster on your side of the field. So good that I actually use three copies of Foolish Burial Goods in this deck too, to be able to send this card to the graveyard exactly when I need it to get the plant monsters out of my hand, because it's essentially a free special summon off my copy of my Foolish Burial Goods. We then play three of the personal tech in this deck, which is three copies of Infernal Reckless Summon. So you might be looking at Infernal Reckless Summon going, wait, how is that really good? Well, let me show you. So what this card does is basically when exactly one monster when 1500 or less attack is special summoned to your field, while your opponent controls a face up monster, you can special summon as many monsters as possible with the same name as the summoned monster from your hand deck and or graveyard in attack position. And your, also your opponent gets to special summon as many monsters as possible with the same name as one of their face up monsters as well. So if your opponent controls an extra deck monster that they only play as a one of, and you activate this on your side of the field, and you special summon back a copy of, say, for example, Card Trooper, or a copy of Lone fire blossom and you special summon it back with monster reborn miracle fertilizer or you special summon out a copy of your spell striker you begin basically get to special summon all those cards to your side of the field um, as quickly as possible and you get to three copies of all of your monsters because it lets you special summon from hand deck and graveyard so you basically get all three of your card troopers all three of your spell strikers all three of your uh, copies of your Lone Fire Blossom and just immediately summons to your side of the field. So you get so much card advantage, but you kind of want to be careful with this card because if your opponent controls a monster like Harpy Lady or a card that has multiple names in the deck, then you are in a little bit of a bad position because you want to make sure that you get rid of that card before you activate your Infernal Reckless Summon, which is basically what the whole deck revolves around is getting your Infernal Reckless Summon from your deck to your hand. We then play for the last three spells. We're playing three copies of Miracle Fertilizer. Miracle Fertilizer lets you target a plant monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but you can't normal summon or set during the turn, um, but you can special summon, um, which is still pretty good. Um, but it's a really good card to be able to get your monsters out of the graveyard, like your copies of Lone Fire and your other plant princesses, because it doesn't care about level. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the very few traps that we play in this deck, because we only play three. And the three traps that we're playing is three copies of Back to the Front. So this card is really good too. Because it lets you target a monster in your graveyard and special summon it back in defense position, which the best one actually to summon back in defense position is either going to be your copy of your uh, Princess of Camellias or your copy of your uh, Princess of Autumn Leaves. You special summon this in defense position to your side of the field. It has 2800 defense, so it's pretty good. And during your turn, you can special summon out back something like your copy of Lone Fire to your side of the field. And it works very well with your copy of Inferno Reckless Summon. Because Inferno Reckless Summon is just really good to combo 
with stuff like Back to the Front, Miracle Fertilizer, your copies of your Rose Bell Revelation. Like there's just so many different plays, your Debris Dragon, Crane Crane. Like there's so many plays with your copies of your Inferno Reckless Summon that you're going to be able to pop off in this deck with that. And Revival Traps are just really good. I actually used to play Call by Hanum, but it used to get popped by stuff like MST, Twin Twisters, and stuff like that. So I interchanged it out for Back to the Front. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So the extra deck, we're going to be playing three copies of Melee of the Trees. Melee of the Trees is pretty good in this deck, too. It's the main card that I use in the extra deck, because it takes two Earth monsters that are level three to overlay in this card, and you can detach a material from this card to either send a plant monster from your deck to the graveyard or target a plant monster in the graveyard and special summon it in face of defense, which is fantastic, because if you overlay into this card with two Spell Strikers, two Card Troopers, or anything like that, you're going to be able to revive back a plant monster to your side of the field, which can be one of your big plant princesses, which is fantastic. I believe same copy of Fortune Tune, Fortune Tune is here in case I use, for example, my opponent negates a copy of Lone Fire on my side of the field and I have a Spell Striker on Lone Fire. I can make this and it can't be used for a battle and it helps me go into Zeus. We play the same copy of Downer Magician for the Zeus. Zeus is fantastic in this deck, I will mention you guys. You play the same copy of number 87, Queen of the Night. Because I wanted to play all the plant processes in this deck, I play this card, I rarely go into it. It is kind of a free slot that if you want to change it out for something else, you totally can. I like it as a one-up in the deck because it does let me play all the plant processes, all five of them because she technically is one of them. Um, and what it does is, if you guys are unfamiliar with this, you can once per turn during either player's turn, detach a material from this card. She does take three level eights, though, which is one, the only downside of this card. But you can detach a material from this card to either target a set spell or trap you're running controls, and while this card is faceable on the field, that set card cannot be activated. Target a plant-type monster on the field, change it to... Um, change target to face down defense, or target to face a monster on the field, and it gains 300 attack. It's fixed, not that great, but it's still a plant princess, so I wanted to play it as a one of. You can change it out if you want to for a Galaxy Eyes monster, for example, a Full Armor Photon, or a copy of number 62, to get you a little bit bigger of a beat stick, or Felgrand. Felgrand's another good option, or Dingirsu. We then play a single copy of number 38. 38's pretty good, too, because it negates spells. We play a single copy of Teardrop the Rika Queen. Teardrop is really awesome. And it's borderline the boss monster of the deck outside of Titania, uh, or Titania. What this card does is you detach a material from this card and then target one monster on the field and you tribute it. And it's a quick effect if it has a plant monster as a material, which it always will. And then also you can once per turn, uh, each time a monster is tributed, this card gains tuner attack until the end of the turn. So you can essentially make this card go up to 3,000, which is a very, very good effect. Then we play the same copy of Double A Zeus because it board wipes, which is fantastic. We then play for the only Synchro Monster we're playing a single copy of Black Rose Dragon because Black Rose Dragon works really good with plant monsters. And it's really easy to summon out a copy of Debris Dragon, bring back a copy of Lone Fire, a copy of your uh, Car Trooper, or something like that, and just immediately Synchro Summon into a copy of the Black Rose Dragon and Board Wipe. Or use its other effect to be able to banish Plant Monster from the graveyard to reduce a monster your opponent controls, attack to zero, and put it in attack position. We then play a single copy of Access Code. Access Code is pretty good in this deck because you can pop cards. You can play Boral Load or Boral Sword if you want to in its place. If you're going for a little bit more budget build, you can change this out. Play a single copy of Unicorn because it spins stuff. A single copy of Phoenix because it uh, pops spells and traps. Uh, Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. Jasmine's pretty good too because if your life points are higher than your opponents, um, you can, uh, and this card and any other plant monsters cannot be destroyed by battle as well, which is pretty good just to be able to protect all your plant monsters from being destroyed by battle. And you also you can tribute uh, one monster. This card points to you to special summon a plant monster from your deck and defense position. And you can only use the effect of this card once per turn. And once per turn, if you gain life point, then you can add a plant monster from your deck to your hand. But you don't really gain life points in this deck. You kind of just play through the game. And this card's pretty good if you have higher life points than your opponent to be able to special summon a plant monster from the deck. We then play the same copy of IP Masquerade because IP is really good to go in your copy of your Nightmare Unicorn to be able to spend stuff during your opponent's turn. So that's pretty much it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. It's a really fun deck to play with. It's really interesting to be able to play with a Plant Princess deck in 2021. It's still, it's interesting. I feel like they should give them their own archetype because all they have right now is the five pretty much Plant Princesses and whatever plants have mixed in, which is nice and all, but I really wish that they would actually make it a full archetype based around the Plant Princesses. I think that would really be cool. I think the only way that they could actually do it is make it based around level eight or higher plant monsters, which would be okay, but it would work. So anyways, guys, this is Darkroom Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell there so you can come part notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down the description below, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.